It's me, Diana. Um, I'm 21 years old. I study architecture at the Technical University of Vienna. And I'd like to give you a short insight into my life as an architect student. So usually, at the start of every semester, you get confronted with a task, such as building an exhibition tower or a residential building in a certain area. So you, during the semester, you start to examine the geographical givens. You come up with an idea that then you develop into a concept and after it's put into a model, into shape, into a building. So this is the first project I did at university, um, and it's an exhibition tower for birds. At that time, I was trying to do something very revolutionary, something very originally. I was trying to find a construction that would somehow, that would work in reality, of course, and would look like it would float above the ground as if there was no gravity, which is something quite impossible. <laughs> I know that now. But what, what do you think happened after the semester ended with that revolutionary idea I had? Well, I tell you. Uh, it ended up on a shelf in my room where it started to get old and dusty, and after the time passed by, it gained more and more companions. And usually, when I start to look at this shelf in my room, I just there are some questions that pop up in my, hand, in my head and I ask myself, what's the purpose of, the, of all this? Why am I doing this um, if nobody gets to see anything of, of my ideas or models? Um, and usually then I get very frustrated and melancholy. But as it is in life, we meet people. And I came across a person, a person that inspired me, a person that showed me that we can really change something as long as we believe in ourselves a bit and show a bit of courage. And that person is Lucas, um, my boyfriend and companion, a person who loves to take action into his own hands and um, who gets very involved in all that surrounding him. So let me now tell you the story of an idea that did not only inspire me, but many people. An idea that was not meant to end up on a shelf. So the first thought that comes to my mind when I start to remember the very beginning of our project is me and Lucas sitting in our living room in front of the TV watching the news. So people are arguing about um, the Hippo Alpe Adri scandal. And the Austrian opposite parties, they urge the population to sign these petitions in order to investigate the case. Um, so for those who are not familiar with that case, I give you a short review. So the Hypo Alpe Adria Bank is Austria's fifth largest bank. It's located in the southern province of Carinthia. Um, and it's also Austria's most controversial bank. Uh, for some, it might also be the biggest crime in the Second Republic of Austria. So you probably all ask yourself, what happened exactly? Exactly? Nobody knows what happened exactly. And that's the point. And as long as there will be no investigations made on the case, we will never know who had its fingers in the pie. This is a thing that should not longer interest us now. What we know, and what is very important, what we know for sure, is that the Austrian taxpayers will have to cover a great, uh, a great loss of money. They have to pay 19 billion euros in order to save this bank from bankruptcy. But this is not the only shocking thing, or the only alarming thing, I think. Much more shocking is the reaction of the Austrian population because there was no reaction. Despite this petition I told you before, but they only gathered 150,000 signatures, which is nothing. I mean, in Austria, there are 8 million people living and 50% pay income taxes. So how come nobody reacted when money was being more or less stolen out of their own pockets? The answer for that is probably why the streets of Austria weren't overcrowded by demonstrating and frustrated people why this did not happen is probably because this amount of money, this 19 billion euros on the screen you see here, they somehow they surpass the human power of imagination. I dare to say that nobody in this room has ever been in touch with that great sums or has ever had such an amount of money in their bank accounts. I mean, there is simply a comprehensive scale missing. To, to imagine what great loss that is for Austria and what Austria could have done with that money instead. And that leads me to our general idea of the project. We had, me and Lucas, while we were sitting in front of television and watching this incredible news, 
And the key moment when Lucas takes out the paper and we start to calculate how many single family houses you could build with 19 billion euros. The answer, thousands. So an entire city for over 100,000 people. An entire city with all its infrastructure, housing, electricity, everything. So at that moment, our idea was born. And um, building an entire city for 19 billion euros would be the perfect way to make this amount of money understandable for everybody. So we were just two people. It was just me and Lucas. So we needed more to plan this whole city for over 100,000 people. So the next step was then to find all these people. Um, the only disadvantage, well, uh, all of the students, or mostly all of the students, were either already gone or they were preparing to go for summer vacations. So it made it quite hard to organize a group uh, of students to plan a city with. But somehow, or finally though, we managed. And we found 15 devoted students that from, from different, uh, this, this is very important, from different fields of studies. So we had ar architecture students, spatial planning, civil engineering, informatics students, and they were all willing to share their time or to, to sacrifice their time with us and to plan a city with. So the big challenge then was then really to plan a city where all of these people you see, this was the really beginning of our project, you see we were quite confused, we didn't know how to start, but uh, what was really important for us um, like to plan a city where all of these would like to live in. So all of these could identify with the city, which is a very hard task to do. I mean, working cross-functional, everybody has his own opinion of how an ideal city has to look like he would like to live in. So finally, though, <laughs> we managed, we find common ground, and this is what we call Hypotopia, our city. And Hypotopia, the, or the name, I just want to explain the name. Hypotopia uh, is a combination of two words. So you have the utopia, which means a fictive, idle word that probably doesn't exist. And you have the hypo, that of course reminds us of the controversial bank I told you before. <laughs> but it's, hypo also is a Greek word, it stands for uh, under, beneath, or below, meaning a change that comes from the bottom, so a bottom-up principle. Okay, so despite this great range of different opinions we all had, we also managed to find um, common ideas and visions. So I might just give you a short review of all these, um, like all the basic facts of our Hypotopia city. So the most important scale in Hypotopia is the human being. Not the car as it is nowadays, no, it's the human being. So Hypotopia is entirely car-free planned. In addition, uh, Hypotopia is calculated to be independent in terms of its energy pr production. So it receives its energy from renewable sources such as wind, water, solar power and trash recycling. Moreover, all the rooftops um, are either used as cultivation areas or as f for the energy generation. But very important, they are accessible for the general public and not, not as it is in Vienna, only meant for those people who can afford it, a flat in the top, I mean, of a building. It's very expensive. Uh, no, in Hypotopia, they are for the general public and that's an important point. We put a great focus in education. We have a, a big campus in the southeast of our city. Moreover, we think uh, education should not be only meant for students and people. They should be meant for the whole population, the whole inhabitants of Hypotopia. So we have multifunctional spaces spread all over the city that can be temporarily occupied by different faculties in order to share their knowledge to the local community. But at that point, it is very important that you understand Hypotopia is not the perfect city. I mean, I think there is no expert on this world that can come up with a city in less than two months, uh, as we had. Uh, it's more a platform a platform where everybody can come and somehow com contribute, can come and, and, and tell us his idea about uh, an ideal city he would love to live in.
approximately two months ago we finished the planning process and we were able to upload our first version of Hippotopia, which was a great relief. I mean, it was so hard work, really. But even better than that was the fact that people started to take use of this platform idea. And we got many, many emails. Um, we got so many phone calls. Many of these people, even completely strangers, they stepped by and just gave us their personal, their personal feeling about the city, uh, a feedback, which was wonderful to see there. I mean, <laughs> wow. Um, so because of the social networking sites, also the media took notice of us. And we got many, many, uh, or several newspaper articles. We were invited to interviews on television and to different radio stations, which was very exciting because we had never had a chance in our life to do something like this. Um, but this, uh, with the, sorry, with the media presence, we also get the financial support. And with this financial support, we were able to somehow fulfill our project and to start and also build a physical model, a physical model, sorry, out of concrete in the scale 1 to 100 that is going to be exhibited on the 15th of October this year, so in two weeks, uh, at the Karlsplatz, so in the great big fountain in the middle of Karlsplatz, in front of the, in front of the church. It was very, very important for us to not only have a uh, virtually planned city, but a physical model. Why? Because we think it's not enough to only see this great loss of money, but to be able to walk through the city, to be able to touch and feel this great loss of money in order to make it understandable. And I've got an example, of, uh, I took an example with me. <sighs> so this is one concrete cube out of 3,000 pieces we have of Tupatopia. This one just weighs, mm, I'd say, five kilograms. It's not, it's not a lot. Uh, the biggest stone or the biggest block, concrete block, weighs, I think, 200 kilograms. So just in sort that you can imagine, this model is going to weigh 70 tons, and it fills up the whole, I don't know if you know this fountain, it fills the whole fountain. It's uh, incredible big. Uh, uh, model. I think it's going to be Austrian's biggest scale model. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, we, will, we will see. <laughs> uh, so, what, what, what the point about the concrete block? Yes. Um, for some, this might only be a banal concrete cube. But for me, it is more than that. For me, this concrete cube provides housing for over 100 people. So, the first two rows, they could live in here. In, in addition, it has enough space for a children's daycare center in the basement or a drugstore in the first floor. So the reason why I'm standing here in front of you today and talking about our project is because we want to make people understand that this is in our duty as citizens to not step back but to react when something goes wrong in our society. We don't, we from Hippotopia, all these people I've been planning with, we don't longer want to be part of a system where lying and stealing is a common thing or where it's allowed. We would like to be an example for those people who feel powerless in front of the system and show them that we can really do something about it. So step out of your comfort zone, go out, go and act and react and make a difference. If we, as a bunch of students that had no idea, I mean, no experience, no money, no nothing, were able to do this, then anyone can. So I would like just to show you a short teaser, a short trailer of our city.
architecture of protest. Thank you very much.